Hello coders. Good morning. Sorry for being so, so late. The internet, the internet let me down this morning. Could you imagine that? Um, so yeah, <laughs> the quicker we get the internet sorted in this place, the better. Um, so what I'm doing today is trying to wrap up, although I don't think we've got enough time to do it, but wrap up some of the tests, some of the failing tests um, that I have uh, through this whole process of upgrading to Symphony 5 and having to change some of the internals of things um, has caused a bit of a headache. One headache that I solved yesterday was the requirement that um, I needed to add some extensions, PHP extensions, to the Docker build. Um, now I did all of this yesterday on the laptop, so I need to pull all the changes across, which will take some time, so whether we actually get into the code or not, I don't know. So I'm going to have to do a complete rebuild. I've just pulled down my changes, as you can see in here. Uh, we have, uh, not in there, sorry, in here. Um, fixing tests, fixing tests, fixing tests, work in progress. My commit messages are terrible. Terrible. <laughs> but you can see how late I was working last night. Uh, 2256, 2237, 2218, 2043, and then for the rest of that day. <laughs> oh, dear. So, um... Yeah, I've needed to add the HTTP um, extension into my composer.json file. So in here, um, which is somewhere, somewhere up here. There we go. The uh, HTTP. Now, this requires obviously a PHP extension, which needs to be installed in uh, the Docker container. But of course, you know, it's never that straightforward, is it? So, <laughs> what I've had to do, <laughs> I'll show you the Docker file, because it's, um, uh, I, it could be a lot simpler, but I was just pulling my hair out and throwing things at the wall yesterday. Um, where is it? Where is that uh, Docker file? Bear with me a minute whilst I, in environments, here we go, in API, in development, in Docker file. <coughs> So, in order to get the HTTP extension, one has to install it via uh, Peckle, uh, which is never straightforward because you then need to have uh, libraries. <laughs> so, this one, this Peckle um, extension requires ProPro. -Pro. I have no idea what ProPro -Pro is. It also needs RAF, R A P H F. Again, I need to look at what these are, but these are requirements for that extension. You then enable it, and I did some cleanup work here. So this is the this is the new uh, layer that I've had to add. But in order to, I think it was Pro Pro, or it was either Pro Pro or uh, RAF. Either one of those required me to install um, uh, uh, libzib, zlib, and also curl and also um, OpenSSL, uh, as well as Icon V. So, you know, <laughs> one little ch change to a composer file has changed all the things. So, yeah, that's that was my day yesterday. It, was so, it, was, it wasn't fun um, in terms of, like, wrapping, getting my head around this. So where are we at? We've just done a build. That's all gone through. Okay, so now what we can do is um, we can we can attempt to run the tests. So what I'm going to do is go into um, well we can run it from here actually. We can do make tests. Now this is going to do um, actually no 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 no. Let me think about this for a second. Uh, I need to adjust the database because the database has changed, um, which requires uh, it re it requires the dump to be installed. So let's just do that. It's MK make DB. Sorry, I'm having to pull that back from my memory. It's test. I think it's restore. Yeah, restore. It's either test, restore, or rebuild. Let me just double check what those do. Uh, cats. I think it's restore uh, of the make file. It's one of these things. One of these things. So we're trying to put back the dump file, which is 
is this. It's DB restore. Restore. Okay, cool. All right, let's clear that down. So it's make um, make DB test restore. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I've had to change some of the database restore. Um, there we go. So that's gone in now. Sweet. So now we should be able to. I'm just going to double check a couple of things. So let's just bring that up. Go into another terminal and then do um, a reverse search of my SQL going into there. That's fine. No, I need to go into the actual container, of course. Into there. There we go. That's, we're using Docker Compose. Put in the super squir secret squirrel password for development and then um, use how to code well. That's the database. I just want to show the tables. I want to see what tables I've got. Yes, the user client. That's the new one. Okay, let's just uh, come out of this. Okay, clear that down. In fact, let's just get rid of the window. Actually, it's probably best to have the window because I can do jump into the container. I'm going to run all the tests in a minute. So as I do that, I want to tail and follow var log uh, dev log. There we go. Okay, right. So now in this side, we're going to run those tests. So we're going to do make tests. Tests. Now this is going to do PHP uh, CBF uh, first, and then it's going to do um, mess detection. Then it's going to do um, uh, PHP STAN and uh, all the other lovely things. Then it's going to, after that, it's going to run uh, Codeception um, uh, run against all the tests. It's going to take a bit of time. We're probably looking about five minutes. Um, but that's fine. That's fine. So this is good. None, that this, none of this should error now. None of this should freak out. Um, because I've just done the database import, so this should be good. The mapping should be good. Please say the mapping's good. I had a lot of problems with this yesterday, with the mapping not being great. There we go. The mapping's good. Okay, cool. So now it's doing cache clear, which is good because, you know, I've just done a big update. So um, the cache would be completely stale. So this will wipe that out. Make files make your life easier. Um, I should write a blog post about that one, one day. Now it's doing the Codeception run. So this is going to go through. There's about 416, 17 tests, I think. It's going to go through all of them, one by one. The API tests, as I've mentioned many times before, are actually making API requests to the, data, to, uh, to the site. And uh, it's going to uh, delete the database and then recreate the database for each time. Thus, these API tests are incredibly, incredibly slow. Um, but there is a pocket of tests. There's about nine tests that I had last night that were failing. Uh, so I, I made a, a little challenge for myself last night. I had something crazy like I was working on 60 tests that were failing uh, yesterday. And I got it down to nine and I was like, I, I'm going to get it down to single figures before I go to sleep. So I managed to get it down to nine yesterday. And once the tests will run, ho <laughs> hopefully there is only going to be nine that's failed. Otherwise, something's gone wrong with my pulling over the code. Uh, once all those tests are, are, are running and we actually know which are failing, I can then go ahead and <clears throat> fix them. I've got a kind of a, a little edu sort of edu educated guess as to some of the tests that are failing and why. I'm keeping the logs running here because I want to just, you know, make sure and catch um, some things. Um, but there was a lot of change yesterday. I mean, not only did we change, did I change the um, the Docker file here, which needs to be tidied up, because this can go inside this, which can go inside this. This could be one single layer. Um, I did it as a separate layer yesterday because I was having so much problem, many problems with this, um, that uh, I just decided to put it in a single layer, meaning that any um, uh, if that if this wasn't changed, this would just be cached, so it'd be a quicker quicker way through. Anyway, um, lots of change yesterday. Uh, let's have a let's have a, a a noodle through. So that's still going through, all right. Um, so the biggest biggest issue I had was around the user managers. Um, what was going on um, was that because we've removed FOSS user, because FOSS user is no longer maintained in Symfony 5, um, or 
isn't going to be maintained in Symphony 5. I had to remove it for the upgrade to, to happen. Um, the, obviously, the user manager went away, <laughs> which was a big, big issue uh, because I had to create my own. And then I also had to create um, my own uh, user provider uh, and also some authentication level layers. Um, so we got the authenticator, we got the auth provider, the how to code well user. All of these are kind of like um, they're, they're using the guard type stuff. And also I, I included, which is something that I'm unsure whether I need, um, I've included the KPN University OAuth 2 client bundle. Um, this is really good. This bundle is really, really nice because it allows you to have social logins. It's a feature that I would like to have later. It was a, it, this bundle I thought would have to be a replacement for this bundle here. This is the Friends of Symphony OAuth. Um, but this is a, more of a server, this is more of a client, so they kind of work in conjunction. That's why I have those, that user client table uh, that I added. Um, but right now this is kind of sat dormant. Um, uh, because uh, I discovered a way of actually using this yesterday uh, using the usual way of um, wiring up and bypassing the fact that we're not no longer using FOSS user um, creating my own user like here so there was a lot of change um, a lot of change involved with the user manager no longer extends the FOSS user manager because that no longer exists which broke a whole ton of this stuff um, and what I ended up doing was commenting out code <laughs> um, that was um, that was just blowing the tests apart. So there's a couple of pieces of functionality in here um, where the tests are trying to do things that um, the, the functionality has been commented out. That's why they're failing. So it's kind of like a bit of a wash up what I need to do. Let's have a little look and see where we're at with this. So yeah, we can see that there's um, an error here. Forgotten password test. Reset token. I'm going to have a quick look at that. I'm just going to uh, scroll up here. There's nothing else that's gone bang. That's fine. It's Oh, yeah, this one too. Incorrect payload. There's no point in having this running, to be honest. Let's get rid of that. Um, yeah, so there's a number of change uh, issues. Uh, so far, mostly around the registration, the profile, the forgotten password. Sensitive areas, you know, sensitive areas. Um, let's have a look at um, let's have a look at this one first. Let's start from the top. Forgotten password, test, incorrect payload, request test. Um, okay, let's see where that lives. This will be in an API, won't it? Um, there we go. And uh, obviously, I, I don't have a line number here, but um, it should be incorrect payload request test. <clears throat> Incorrect, let's scroll, incorrect token, incorrect token, because these are, um, this is what the method is called, but broken apart with spaces instead of um, camel case. Incorrect payload we're looking for, incorrect payload request test, here we go. All right, so that somehow this is blown, <coughs> blown up, and I can already see what the problem is. <coughs> this is because we're not, this is no longer the way that I'm dealing with errors. Uh, this needs to be this need to be needs to be message, um, which is that, and we also have a code, which is bad request. That's four hundred. There we go. Okay, so that's that should be fixed. Okay, next one. Um, forgotten password reset token. That was the other one we saw, wasn't it? Which was somewhere. Incorrect token request. Incorrect. Where are we? Incorrect payload. Done that. That's message type test, isn't it? That's what we're looking for. Message type test. Scroll down. Here we go. Okay, so we've got. I have forgotten my password at house code well at testing.halfkowell.net and we're looking for um, 200 OK. So I'm not entirely sure how to solve that. As I've been going through here, I've been um, sort of fixing um, various inconsistencies with the actual documentation and the, the code itself. So this is going to be an interesting job to, to sort of do. 
I can't see immediately what that could be wrong. Um, unless, again, there's, there is absolutely nothing here. It's just a cross. I've got to wait for all of this to go through. Um, perhaps we'll skip that for now. Because I can't, I can't think of what could go. Some of these tests, because I've changed the code, I know what I've changed and therefore I can sort of identify quickly things that have gone wrong. Um, but I don't know what's, what that's about. So edit profile test, let's have another. Where are we with this? Oh, it's actually done, is it? Okay, that's probably, that's handy. <coughs> yeah, so nine failures, that's good, because that means that we the code is as up to date as it is on my laptop, which is great. Um, nine tests, 415, uh, sorry, nine, four, uh, 415 tests and nine failures. So, yeah, yeah not so bad. Um, what we can do, Okay, that seems uh, a simpler one to solve. It's just checking the response, although I'll need to have a look at and see. I just want to check that one that we've just fixed, which was the forgotten reset token. Um, expected status code 200, actual is 500. All right, let's run. Error with request, 400. Yeah, I think that's the one we've just done, which seems okay. I'm gonna just quickly run this. Um, we can dive into the container and uh, run this. This is why I've grouped them, right? Because I, I, can, I, can, I can run a test on a single, uh, I can run a single test. So if we, uh, let's just create a new, a new shell just so I've got this in, uh, in, in the, the background here for notes. I'm going to dive into Bash and no, I need to evaluate my shell, of course. And then I'm going to dive into Bash and we're going to go uh, bin code sept and then run hyphen g and then f uh, focus on that one. This should hopefully pass. Yes, okay, good. So Let's scroll up to, so that one solves this. This one here then is something else. This is the message type test. So let's run that message type test. That would be down here, right? This one. Um, so from here, we can run that test. This is going to fail. The, up, the actual upgrade to Symphony 5 has, has actually been relatively painless. That's a bit weird. That's just come, come and passed, that one. Why has that passed? That's confusing, because that should have failed. Okay, let's skip over that one for a minute. Yeah, the actual upgrade to Symphony 5 um, has you know, the framework itself has been relatively painless. It's the upgrade of everything else that is required um, has been quite painful. Um, so that was the message type test, which we're going to just skip over. Um, although this is interesting, maximum function level nesting of 256 reached aborting. That's quite worrying. Um, interesting. We'll run this again in a minute. Um, edit profile, so this is a 500, again, a maximum le level of nesting. What? That's weird. Uh, is there, that's another one. I'm, so I'm guessing there's some kind of common issue um, with that. Register an email that is already in the system. Uh, this is returning a 500 instead of a 400 for some reason. Oh, and it's because of the maximum level. Oh dear. So I've obviously wired something up wrong. Um, let's deal with this one. Stripe customer payment cessed. Invalid payload. I suppose what's probably best is if I work through the low hanging fruit first and then attempt to tackle these big ones um, sort of in, in, a, in a hit. Uh, response JSON code cannot contain the data provided. This is invalid payload. 
Let's have a little look, noodle on that one. Uh, so this was this here. Let's get into the code and have a little look. And does it give any f sort of line number? 65. Here we go. Um, invalid payload. I'm. Yeah, that shouldn't be. F that should be 400. That shouldn't be sh creating a, a, a server problem there. Okay, does email exist with another account? This is profile testing now. Failed asserting that uh, false is true. So these are now getting into the weeds a little bit. Let's tackle these. Um, number seven here, which is profile test, which is an integration test. Um, that's a bit strange. Why is that namespace wrong? Let's have a look. That is an integration, which should be into ah, it's because of the capital I. There we go. All right, let me just go through the rest of them <clears throat> and make sure that they are all lowercase. I'm trying to use this as a on an opportunity to tidy things up as I go. Um, just a bit of housekeeping. I know that I probably should do this in, a, in another commit, you know, in a single commit, but because it's just me working on this project, it's okay. That's my excuse. I'm sticking to it. No need to comment your code twice. And yes, code is commenting itself. In my opinion, if you're reading the code and it reads like a comment, like that is unit tester, then there's no point in duplicating it up there unless you're using or relying on some form of documentation that requires that. Why is this? Um, this should be Stripe, not database. That's why. And then this should be Stripe. That should be Stripe. Why is this? Oh, yeah. Lowercase i on this. There we go. And we'll do the validators as well. I'll run all the tests again, so if there's any any issues, we'll quickly find them. But um, it was the profile test, this one, uh, that was having the 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 <coughs> excuse me the issue. Um, okay, so we instantiating a actually is this the one here? Does the exist with another account? Yes. <coughs> okay, so we're instantiating a new user and we're setting the user as test at test.com. Fine. We're grabbing the user manager um, from here. Let me just make sure that, that that is the right user manager. Yes. Um, then we are instantiating a new profile validator, passing in the user manager and the user, and then we're saying, well, I've changed the email to this, but does this exist already in the, in the system? And I think it does. Uh, so this should return true, but we're saying that it's returning false. Is that right? Yeah, we're, re we're saying that it's returning false instead of true on line 35, which is he here. Well, it would be if I had not hadn't changed all that stuff. So um, that's strange. This means this almost looks like this isn't in our database dump. So I'm going to have a little look into that um, in the testing dump file. Uh, how to code well is spelled right. It is here. Free test one. Yep, that looks fine to me. So, could it be an issue with this? Fine use of my email, passing in the value. This should return a Boolean. goes up to here. Uh, query builder pulling out the email 
I mean, that looks fine to me. So... <laughs> I'm unsure. What's this one? Just I'm just having a little look to see if there's anything similar. So test validate. This is profile. Again, profile test. We're looking for test validate. We've got the original email here. We're setting the email. We're passing in an array of stuff. And we're looking for grabbing the user manager. Then we are instantiating the validator. And we're validating that the email Failed asserting that the actual size zero matches expected size one. As a error count. Oh, right. Okay, so this would obviously come through data providers, right? Which is down here. Okay, so we are expecting an error count. Uh, error count of one, and I think it's because this already exists. So this test is actually doing what the other test was doing, but whatever. Um, the issue here is that we are, the actual size is zero, but we are looking for an error of one. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to run these, I think, myself individually, just so I've got an idea as to what's going on. Um... Yeah, these are integration tests, right? So let's run the validator profile. Okay. There we go, seven tests, they're all failing. Oh, no, there's three that are working. So those work, those work, but these three. Does email exist with another account? Is there a way I can isolate these? Yeah, let's look at, let's focus on this one. I think these tests are actually doing the same thing, aren't they? Are they not? Because we're going, does the email exist with another account? Oh, no, we're not. We're doing a validate here, and then we're doing a does exist. Okay, fine. All right, so here we go. Failed, false is true. On line 32. So we're saying that we cannot find this and yet I can if I was to go into the database this is uh, a little strange uh, let's just do a CD and then an eval and then a um, MySQL uh, use how to code well I've got to spell that right obviously and then we do select all from user where email is equal to the testing email. There we go, we've got it. So <laughs> I don't really know why this is not returning unless there's something wrong with the instance. If this user isn't an instance of this so well, that's not being thrown so that's fine so then we write we do this manager find user by email passing in the value which is the email and then we were saying if found user is an instance of uh, user and the found user isn't the current user um, right so I reckon it's something to do with this you know So find user by, uh, 
That is essentially the query that I've just ran. So select um, user email email where email is email if the instance is user, which would be result, then return null. Okay. That's returning a boolean, which will either return true or false on this statement. Uh, this is where I wish I had my debugger installed, um, just so I can step through this. Okay. Uh, all right. How do I get? How do I? How do I work through this? If it's a, if that is that. So if the found user is an instance of the user, so if that hasn't returned null, app entity user, and this is uh, user implements entity interface and user interface, uh, user up here is app user, so that's fine. Um, and the found user isn't the current user. Let's just remove this check for a minute and then let's run that test. No. I really need to get my debugger working. This is um this is going to pr prove very difficult um without this. Unless this is this user is an instance of user. Unless um, what I'm doing here is I'm no, it's still app user. That's fine. this user exists so this would should return true this uh, this user here is being um, if it, it we, we would have thrown this exception and that would have failed the test so we know that that's that's a correct we know that the user here is being passed incorrectly um, and the user manager itself. Is there anything down here I can do? Is there any kind of logs or anything that I can I can see? That might um, no, nothing's coming into the logs. It's just it's just being, it's just failing. These deprecations aren't anything, uh, these are uh, PHP unit stuff, so that's fine. Oh man, that sucks. That sucks. I really could do with killing my debugger working, to be fair. Otherwise I'm going to have to dump out a load of code. Ah, dear. I know it's going to be something really, really, really small. Um, just some sort of miswiring that I've uh, that I've screwed up. <sighs> Darn it! Darn it! Okay. Um, okay. Let's look. So we instantiate a new user. We set the email of the user to test at test.com. We then um, load the user manager from the service from the tester service. And then we instantiate a new profile a validator. Just make sure that's correct. Yeah, that is a validator. And uh, we pass in the user manager. That's the first argument. And the second argument is a nullable user. 
we then change the email um, hang on a minute hold fire what's going on here that doesn't seem right yeah so what this is doing it's essentially just these two lines but this is wiring um, this is saying does do we can we make a connection to the database Hello, coders. and can we check that there's any users that ex that exist with this email thank you very much for following uh, Lustra CZE thank you very much I appreciate that I hope you're having a great morning it's the morning here it's um it's uh, UK time BST I'm a little bit late because I was um, had some problems with the internet Um, this is this has stumped me. This is, really has stumped me um, because this, the fact that this is returning a boolean, right? So the fact that this is returning um, false instead of true makes me feel like the database isn't wired up um, because I can see in the, the actual database. I can see. Oops come out of the container, go into uh, my uh, SQL. I can see um, that there is a user. Um, there isn't anything clever going on here, the fact that it's looking for an ex something that does exist or anything daft. It's just find... Hang on a minute, that's odd. Okay, that's just a wrapper to this one. <laughs> this is, there, there is a lot of dress, um, mess that I need to deal with. Um, this is just me trying to push things in from from the old FOSS user. Anyway, find my username. Find by email, sorry. There's nothing in here to check whether there's an active user or anything like that. That's what I'm. That's what I was looking for. So if we were to, to step through this in our heads as to why this would be returning um, true instead of false, this would be returning tr uh, a user. And the user, no, this would be returning a null. Yeah, let's, let's think about this. This would be returning null because it's saying that there isn't a user that has this email, which means then that... Um, if that returns null, this would return false because the found user isn't would be null, so that would be false, and obviously that would be false, and therefore that would be, and that would be a user. So this whole thing would be false. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to do something a little bit silly. We're just going to dump out the found user. And we'll just kill it here. And I think I need to run... Here we go, VV. So what we're doing is we're returning null. Okay. So let's just let's just drag this over here for a second. Um, this is null, right? It's connecting to the database. All these things, it's connecting to the database. This is what the VV does. It gives you some output. So connecting to the database, executing uh, the populator. So it's populating the uh, the dump file in, which is great. And then we are. Um, I would, I would like to think it would be returning the query here. It says disconnected from default on line 95. So it doesn't appear to actually be running this query. Is that what we're saying?
Is that, is that what's going on here? It's just... Okay, so no, we are running a query. We are returning the entity. Um, because if I was to run uh, get email, then we should see the email that we are returning. Oh, this is interesting. Call to member function get email on array. Ah, uh, get result. It hasn't hydrated it, has it? Get one or null result. Let's just give that a go. Thank you very much for following Stunt 3000. Does that mean you've done 3000 stunts? That's pretty cool. Um, okay, so we've got this. I reckon it was because we were not doing uh, one or null. I reckon it was because we were doing um, get result and we weren't hydrating it. Um, this requires the throws here. So let's just give that a blast. I reckon we've solved it. I reckon we fixed it. I reckon this is all going to go through and it's going to work. Yes. Okay, sweet. Yeah, it was because it was because I was doing get results and I didn't I didn't give it any kind of knowledge as to what to hydrate it into. So what I needed to do and it was it were by default it would return an array. So get one or null result it will it will get you one entity or null, which actually is exactly what this is doing. But we're checking the instance of that. Okay, so <coughs> does this mean I, I can get away with not running VB now, so I can just run it normally? Does this mean then that I can run the other profile tests? Um, because they would run all through that method as well. So let's, let's do that. If I just ran validator profile, so if we did... Um, hyphen G validator profile here. Yeah, they seem to be all be working. All right, because I've made a lot of change, I think what I'm gonna do is run all the tests again, just so we've got a, a clearer idea as to what is failing and what isn't failing. So I'm gonna run all of them again. This will take some time um, because it's, you know, it's having to do all sorts of testing and checking and stuff. Um, then there's 415 tests to go through, uh, some of which are API tests, which will drop the database and, and other bits and pieces, so it will take long. I, I know I keep saying all of this stuff, but um, it's, <laughs> it's just the way it works, right? So, Stunt 3000. <clears throat> how's, how's things going? Where, where are you based? Are you... Um, are you in the UK? Are you in the US? Are you are you in which part of the world are you? Nice. Okay. 150 kilometers north of Berlin. Fair play. So, what time zone would that be in? That would be because we're. I'm at um, ten, uh, ten minutes past eight here in the morning. So you must be what nine something or other, because you're forward, aren't you? I don't know. I honestly have no idea. <laughs> What's the weather like over there? Uh, it's um yeah nine ten. See, I was right. Boom. This is the power of the cup of tea. You see, drinking tea in the morning. Gives me superpowers. Um, yeah, what's the weather like over there? Because the weather here is turning into winter. It's, ugh. I swear, English weather is either summer or winter. There is no in between. It's either cold or it's warm. <laughs> Most of the time, it's the latter.
I do like autumn though. Autumn is nice because it um, gives you, it changes the colours of the of the trees and the leaves and everything. Everything sort of changes. We where I'm based at the moment, there is a ton of squirrels, um, and they're all collecting their acorns or burying their acorns for winter, right? So um, and and where I kind of live, where I'm based, there's a bunch of trees around. And um, so all of these squirrels are running around and jumping these trees like they're Tarzan or something daft. Of course, we've got two cats and a dog. Um, one is an English, the dog is an English Springer Spaniel, you know. Um, and by their very nature, they are, um, they, they like to sniff things out and chase things. The cats obviously love to chase the squirrels, although the squirrels are like little furry ninjas. And um, I've not seen for all the years we've been here there hasn't been any incident where a cat has caught a squirrel um and i think i think now the squirrels the local squirrels are um they're kind of used to the cats our cats and they know how far they can push them and i think they play a little bit like you know um you know when you're playing chicken or you know that game chicken um where you're you're um trying to tempt your opponent to come as close to you as possible before you get out of the way. I think it's a little bit like that. <laughs> so these squirrels are not stupid. They know when the cats are around and when they can, they can uh, run away. <laughs> a bit like Tom and Jerry. A nice sunny autumn day. Nice. Still, that's cold. 12, 12, 12 degrees, it's cold. Okay, the, this will take uh, time. <laughs> but the fact that these are passing is good. Because this is what we were... Uh, parts of the stuff that we were playing with. Although this one's broken. Um, but we had nine failing tests last time. So, hopefully, this will be like... Well, so far only one is failing. Um, is there any way I can find the logs for that? Let's. I mean, it might not. It probably won't even be in a log, but. Um... No. Let me just. Uh... Go into here, and then tail, ah, uh, tail, come on, tail, minus F. I should put this as a make file somehow. Um, pumpkin spice. Um, I've never heard of that. I've never heard of that. Pumpkins, I mean, they come out around Halloween, right? Um, so we're talking like later in October so all the shops will have pumpkins and people will be carving them up but I've never heard of pumpkin spice I don't know what that is um, <laughs> I don't know pumpkins aren't spicy so unless there's something what what would you put pumpkin spice on, or are you are you um, talking about something completely different? <laughs> uh, right, var var devlog. That's what we need. Um, why do I not? Oh, uh, logs, devlog. There we go. Um, I'm not going to be able to find that one. It's gone quite far up, hasn't it? So no, I'm, I won't be able to find that, unfortunately. Not unless I um, gave these the errors a bit of context. Okay, so we still have some issues with the profile. Edit profile test is still failing. Um, we've got two issues, it looks like. One is the message test of forgotten password. And then the other one is... They actually look like they're the same, don't they? Oh, this one's the reset token. And then this one is the forgotten password. So this is checking the type that's returned. 
okay that, that, that should be relatively straightforward I think to fix but we'll again we'll we'll still wait for this this to all go through so it looks like we've only got one two three four uh, failing API tests which is remarkable to be honest um, and then down here in the integration tests we they're all passing all the unit tests should be passing and we should be left with four wow that's really good so from nine we're down to four failing tests okay so the register and the um, and these ones the profile tests they seem to be doing something crazy in getting this maximum function nesting level of 256 so there's obviously some sort of recursion going on that that's um, blowing this up um, and I reckon if I fix it in one place it's probably going to fix it in both you remember these API tests they're quite huge in the in the sense of they're not they're not testing a single unit they are testing like it's almost like an acceptance test um, but I want to focus on I want to focus on these things the message type tests because um, I think where was there was another one wasn't there one two hang on there was I'm sure I saw another another failure unless this is it's up here no okay let's focus on let's focus on this one first because I think what I'll do with these two I think I'm probably gonna have to um, there there's there's that one message type test yeah so let's focus on this one and this one let's group these up and then after that we can focus on this maximum function nesting in here and in there and in there and in there <laughs> because I think these are all related um, and yeah <coughs> no pumpkins pumpkins are not not spicy <laughs> Oh, it's a flavor that you put in coffee. Ah, pumpkin coffee sounds interesting. I'm so I've had um I've had some strange coffees in my time. I've had beetroot coffee um before, so that was a like a purple coffee um made from beetroots, believe you me. And uh, that was actually quite good. Um that was that was all right. Um I've had um yeah, like hazelnut coffees and stuff. I've never had a pumpkin coffee though, but I'll look out for one. I don't know what that would taste like. Like I can't remember what pumpkin tastes like. <laughs> no problem. Don't worry. I, I'm I'm more than happy for um for interruptions, especially when they're food related. <laughs> Um, as it's your first time watching, I will just quickly go through what it is that we're building here because it's probably worth giving you some context. So what we're doing here is we're building the new How To Code Well platform and we've been doing this live on Twitch for the past, say, two years. <laughs> um, and it's a replacement of the howtocodewell.net website, which I'll just quickly show here. Um, and I have a YouTube channel, How to Code Well, and um, I, I uh, teach programming and, and uh, code. And uh, these are these are my courses that I've created. If I go view view. Now um, the old site used to be an old Symphony site, but this is um, the front end is built in Gatsby, so it's React. And there is a headless CMS, uh, which we've created in Symfony, and uh, that has a CM, um, an API, which is what we're dealing with at the moment in terms of the code. There is also um, a, a beta site um, that has the ability, which, which has more features than the live site, obviously. Um, there is a bunch of beta testers that we have on our Discord server that are, are going through and testing all of this stuff. Uh, one of the major changes that has happened in the last in this re in the last release is the fact that you can now um, log in, right? So you can start learning. Um, you can register. So let me log in. 
um, and this will give you your dashboard. So this is all React, and this is calling the Symfony APIs that we've been building. And um, so, for instance, I can view a course, um, and I can I can watch the tutorials of this course, and I can uh, eventually will be able, you know, when I build the features, get the code. You can you know watch ad free and other bits and pieces like that. Um, let's see if there's a let's get another one that has more tutorials. This one, eleven tutorials. Um, yes. <laughs> It's in beta, so it's going to fail. Um, let's bring that back. Ah, I need to sign in. That always gets me that basic auth. Okay, so yeah, so these would be the tutorials for this course. Okay, and the current live site is um, doesn't have that facility. So if I was to click on uh, join now, for instance, it would take me to this, you know, um, this uh, newsletter sign up section. Um, same with uh, the login. And if I was to view a course, what would actually happen is we would actually go to the YouTube playlist for that particular course, rather than viewing the courses on on the site. So the next this release is actually quite a large one, right? Because this this requires a lot of um, user interaction. There's user accounts and so forth. <coughs> um, and uh, something that something something happened a bit of a fork in the road um, uh, last week, and that was where I was dealing with some user controls. So there's a bug that is in the on the beta site that I'm trying to fix. And um, whilst doing it, I discovered that there was um, the, the 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 component, the core component that I'm using, Foss user is no longer supported in Symfony 5. It's no longer maintained. Um, and so the beta site and the live site are um, Symfony 4. So I've taken it upon myself to upgrade to Symfony 5 whilst fixing this issue. Um, because in order to fix this issue, I need to have... I can't use um, FOSS user. It's all complicated stuff. So um, this is where this comes in. We go straight back to, to where we are at, at the moment. Um, we have, this is the back end, so not the front end test, the back end tests. We have something in the region of, I think it's 400 and, 415 tests, uh, a bunch of API tests, a bunch of integration tests, and obviously unit tests. And I've upgraded to Symfony 5, and these are the failing tests that we have left. So uh, as soon as I, well, when I fix this, and when I, as soon as I feel comfortable that all the tests are passing and everything is, is where it should be, I will then push this to, um, I'll redeploy this to beta, which is uh, here. And, um, and then I'll ask kindly for the beta testers to then uh, create new, new accounts and test things out and, you know, and really crunch it. <coughs> and then um, I will consider putting it live. You know, it's, it's a, there's a bit of a process going on here that we're still trying to work out because this is this is only like the second, this is only like the second release of this, and this release has more features in than I would have liked. Um, but anyway, anyway, let's get back to the uh, get, <laughs> let's get back to this. <coughs> um, <laughs> yeah, user account systems are always nuts. Yes, upgrade to Symphony 5, failing tests, um, and a large part of those tests that were, are failing is because um, I've had to remove FOSS user, rewrite that whole thick, that whole um, sort of layer, if you will, and um, uh, yeah. And obviously my rewrite isn't working. <laughs> so, okay, going back to the code now. Um, we won't. We'll skip over these maximum function nesting jobbies. I'm sure. I'm sure there's going to be sort of a single point of failure as to why these are failing. Um, but I want to focus on this one: message test type. Um, it's returning a 500 and it's expecting 200, which means that there must be something in the error code uh, in the in the in the logs somewhere. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just tail this again. And uh, we'll see if we can uh, run 
find what this looks like. So, uh, in here. And it was the message type test here. So we're going to grab this. And we're going to run uh, this up here as bin uh, code set because we're running codeception um, and hyphen G because we're going to grab that and this should oh hang on a minute it's not defined oh yeah I need to run it don't I I need to run it and I suppose I best isolate what testing suite it is where are we uh, we are in API okay so this should fail and we're tailing the logs here Okay, so it's failing because, ah, it's failing because of the maximum, ah, okay, maybe these are all related issues here. Um, something's going on with the user manager, which is the replacement I had to rebuild this user manager. So it's obviously something wrong here. Okay, let's, let's work through this. Um, so we are, what are we doing here? We are logging in. Um, where the email is this and then we're returning a critical so let's step through well I can't step through it because I don't have the my debugger set up unfortunately so let's um, work through what this would be doing its message type isn't it it's, uh, it's this one so okay we create an array with this I suppose I could do this in postman I suppose um, passing in I have forgotten my password test uh, that email. I want to be authenticated as the system and then we will send the post request to API user password forgotten. Uh, we encode the data so that's just a JSON um, of that. Fine. And it it's at this point calling this that we seem to be getting this issue. API user password forgotten. So that would be in controller, that would be in API forgotten password, API user password forgotten, that's where we are at. Um, so we're passing in an email, it's a query, that is the, uh, the, the email address, fine, that makes sense. So only the system can make this request. So is the system a user or throw an exception? Then we get down here, decode request. We check whether it's valid. Um, and if it isn't valid, then we uh, give the errors. Then here we do get user by email. Um, I'm looking at the moment for recursion. I'm looking for recursion because that's usually what happens with that maximum nesting. Uh, user instance, user manager generate confirmation token. Okay, let's step through all of this. Let's just go into get user by email. This will then run the find user by email. If, um, in fact, there's no need for that. There's no need for this. Let me just make sure that that is the only one that's been called. Um, API forgotten, user manager is where it's created. It looks like that's the only place that this is called. So let's get rid of this. And uh, put in a So we pass in the email. I will have to surround this with a try catch, but if it doesn't, it's going to throw an inter. If it's not a user interface, if it is a user interface, sorry, it's then going to go down here to generate the confirmation. Um, let me just double check whether that's done anything. I doubt it would have, but let's just, as I make a change, let's just keep a keep a track as to things. 
is there a standard way to code user account system in Symfony 5 that I, that I can easily Google? As a .nev, .net dev, uh, we have something called identity. Um, there is, uh, there is, there is a uh, guard, Symfony guard. Um, although it's, I wouldn't say it's a standard way. It's kind of a, a sort of a an implementation that you can adjust to your needs. <laughs> Um, and it's being um, not replaced, but it's being changed and altered in Symphony 6. Uh, no, so that's still that's still throwing an issue here. Okay, so then we come down here to generate confirmation token. Ah, ha! Is it because I've had to I've had to comment some of this stuff out because um, because I was replacing the user manager. Uh, this is the user manager, yeah, so I was commenting stuff out as I was working, so I wonder if it, this is just the fact that I've commented this out, because I didn't have the token generator, that's why. Alright, let's run this again. It might be that it's just my scaffolding that uh, is, is, is not correct. No. It's still saying maximum nesting. So this would set it by... set. This would uh, not set it active, it would add the confirmation token, it would set the password requested at based on the time um, that was that the request was made. And then, um, again we're saying if it's an instance of user in, we do a save and flush, has sent this, so this is sending out the emails. So we know that it hasn't got to this point here, right? We have we know that it hasn't got to the alerts or the criticals. Um, so is system user or throw? I reckon we should probably put some logging in um, to solve this. Again, I don't have my debugger um, working, so I can't step through it. Um, okay. Let's just put in some debug here. So let's, um, Let's just dump out the user at this point. And um, so you can see it's making a post request. And it appears to be printing something out which is a class, which is good. In fact, what I can do is just do a, Z, a VV on here and just see where it's got to. So it's doing an authorization. We've got the bearer token here. So that's the bearer token that we've got. So it doesn't actually look like it's done any any alterations. Let me just grab get the, make this a little bit bigger so I can actually see what's going on here. Okay, so Anything to do with the stack trace is going to be helpful, but this is the stack trace of Codeception, which isn't helpful. Okay, all right. Okay, so we know we got the user from here. Um, so I think there would be an issue down here somewhere. Save and flush. 
we'll save the entity and flush the entity and return the manager interface. And then down here, we've got the emailer. I reckon it could be the emailer that's causing the problem. Um, let's just remove that for a minute. What happened to Xdebug? Yeah, I just don't have, um, I don't have it wired up, unfortunately. Because I'm, I'm, because, um, I'm running through Docker containers and it's an API, um, it's a bit tricky to wire this, wire it up. I, I will eventually get it sorted. I keep saying I, I, I will. We do have an Xdebug token here, of course. Okay, so it's above this. I am literally having to cut code and just see where it falls. Unless it's down here. Hang on a minute, wait, 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 wait. We've got multiple similar issues here, haven't we? Like for instance, we, I'm just thinking maybe, maybe I should be looking for a commonality between this one and this one. So the forgotten password message test, uh, let's get another one. There was one in the profile, wasn't there? The register. And uh, I'm sure there was another one somewhere. Profile, edit profile, monthly user. Yeah, let me just have a another double check on this one a second. That would go to that would go there. So the commonality is the fact that we've got saving and flushing going on. So if I was to remove, which we've removed here, let's just comment that out a sec. Hey Waddle, thank you for joining. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Okay, that worked. <laughs> that worked. Let's do it again. Yeah, not bad, thank you. It's um it's it's going alright. It's going alright. Um, the failing tests are now in single digits, so, um, and they're actually under five, so, so they're good. I think I'm getting a handle on these things, but obviously the last um, uh, failing tests are always the hardest. <laughs> um, so it was that one. It was that. I'm sure it was that. Let's get, just get rid of the VV. That's strange. Right, let's just add this back in. I think what I need to do is do some form of better testing around uh, this lot. Yeah. Okay, so it's something, definitely something to do with this. The save and flush. Which makes sense because the um, 
the the other issues also have the save and flush calls too. So that's probably a com. That is, so I think I've. Uh, although that's now. F oh, is this a race condition? Am I looking at a race condition here? Hang on a minute. No, 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 no. That would have passed because I've just commented that out. So if I was to uncomment this out and then run this, is this going to fail? If it does fail, this will confirm my suspicion. Yes, it's failed. Okay, so there's something wrong with the save and flush. This save does entity persist. And flush this flush does entity flush so there's something wrong I mean I could probably even target this further by just saying let's just save it um, have I come in hang on a minute hang on a minute hang on a minute have I commented out no okay so it's still doing that so I've commented out the flush call um, and it's failed so there's something to do with the save call this save so there is something going on here okay ah, this is very annoying yeah <laughs> yeah I've just seen the time. Um, unfortunately, I'm going to have to call it a call it a stream on this one um, because um, I am I'm, I'm I'm busy for the rest of the day. But um, I I can't I'm, now I know kind of the area in which this is failing. What I need to do is write some uh, better testing around this lot. I'm going to uncomment this this. But I kind of I've know the area here, and also what I'm going to do is try and get my um, um, debugger working because it would make my life so much easier. But anyway, thank you ever so much, everybody, for joining today. I really appreciate it, and um, I will be seeing you soon. Happy coding, everybody, and have a great day. Cheers. Bye bye.